In this video we're going to look at our first test to find out whether our extremum is a maximum or a minimum. This is called the Legendre test after the famous French mathematician Adrien Marie Legendre who was alive from 1752 to 1833. Now let's not get lost in our mathematics here. What we have here is the second variation, which we derived in the previous video. So by analogy to the simple calculus, we could say this is similar to us looking at the second derivative. And now we're trying to find out whether the second derivative is less than zero, in which case it will have a local maximum, or whether the second derivative is greater than zero, in which case it'll have a local minimum. Now we're only going to state this Legendre test here, and then we'll prove it over the next few videos. So here's the statement here, and I'll describe some of it to you. We're going to have our three provisos here. So the first one is that obviously the first variation has gone to zero. So that is the Euler-Lagrange equation is satisfied. So we do have an extremum. Now secondly, the integration limits are sufficiently small. Now what exactly do we mean by sufficiently small? Well, we're not going to get into that in this video and we'll talk about that in a later video. So again, this video is really just the statement of this test. Now if the partial squared f by partial y derivative squared it does not change sign over the interval AB, so that's something that must uh, be satisfied, then we can say that 1, the extremum is a maximum if partial squared f by partial y derivative squared is less than 0, and the extremum is a minimum if partial squared f by partial y derivative squared is greater than 0. So you can see here, as I mentioned before, that the entire equation here is difficult to deal with. But we don't need to know about most of the equation here. We only really need to know about this part here. So the Legendre test simplifies this second variation down such that we can tell whether the extremum is a maximum or a minimum simply by finding the second variation and then just looking at just this part of the second variation, which is the coefficient here of this eta derivative squared. So it's this part here. So that's just a statement of the Legendre test. Let's go ahead over the next few videos and we'll prove the Legendre test. But in order to do that, we're going to have to introduce the Jacobi accessory equation. So we're going to look at, at two different derivations of this Jacobi accessory equation. And the second derivation that we look at will give us a quite an intuitive feeling of what it's actually telling us. So thank you for listening. I'll get you on the next video. Goodbye.